In this video, we're going to look at how to monitor an SNMP card that's installed in a Centurion RT 2000 VA UPS. Okay, so the first thing you have to do is go and open up Netility, which Netility is a network utility program, and I have it installed in my taskbar here, so let's go and do that. We'll just click on him. Okay, Natility will open up and search the network. In fact, I can just refresh that to check that it's searching the network. Okay, and on my network, I've got two IP addresses associated with two SNMP cards installed in Centurion UPSs. So let's go and have a look at this guy here, that it, that 192.168.042 IP address, just by double-clicking on him. When I double-click on him, my Google Chrome browser will open up to the NetAgent 9 uh, system status page on the SNMP card. Now, I should mention here that the SNMP card is actually a web server on a chip. So what I'm actually doing here is I'm actually monitoring on this IP address that SNMP card installed in my Centurion 2000, Centurion RT 2000 UPS. So what you're greeted with when you first open up the SNMP card is the system status page, which basically just tells you what hardware version you've got on the SNMP card, what kind of firmware you've got installed in the um, SNMP card, and some critical factors that affect the, the UPS. If you want to know the network status of the SNMP card, you just click on him, and basically it will just tell you. In fact, it will be a reflection of what you saw in Natility. Um, in fact, if you compare that IP address, okay, uh, with this IP address in the NetAgent 9 in the browser and the same MAC address as listed up the top there. So that MAC address there corresponds to the MAC address down here. All right, so we can drop it out of here. All right. So um, what what can you do in, uh, in NetAgent 9 when you're on your internet browser? Well, basically you can go and look at the system status page. You'll look at basic information, which will essentially tell you what firmware is installed in your UPS, what model UPS, in this case it's a 2K VA, and what ratings the UPS has. Well, this, this UPS is rated at 240 volts, 50 hertz, and a 72 volt battery string telling me um, 12 times 6. So I've got six batteries in series in my battery string in the Centurion RT 2000 VA UPS. Okay. But the most important page you want to look at is actually the current status page, which tells you what the current UPS uh, status is. So you can look at uh, input voltages, AC input voltage is normal, it's coming in at 251 volts AC or 250 volts AC RMS uh, and at 50 hertz frequency. The output of the UPS in this case is 240 volts, so it's regulating, it's an online device and the load will vary between zero and about 3% because I don't really have anything connected on the output of this particular unit. Okay, so now battery status, you, it tells you very quickly uh, what estimated battery remaining time you have if uh, the UPS should you lose power from the utility wall socket. Okay, so at the moment it's saying it's battery is normal, that's your temperature, battery capacity is 100%, battery voltage is 82.1, and um, well, it won't show anything on time on battery because we're running on AC at the moment. But in another video, I'll show you what happens when you lose power and you'll be able to see that go to battery mode. Okay, what else can you do? Well, you can go to remote control and you can do, uh, you can run simple battery tests. And if you go and apply that, you can actually invoke a battery test remotely from anywhere in the world that you have access to this IP address. Okay, um, you can. In my case, I've got a because of the the nature of the SNMP card that I've got. It's got an integrated USB uh, Netfeeler comms interface on my SNMP card. In addition to the Cat5 connector, I can go and look at the Netfeeler device, and it's telling me that the environmental temperature in this room currently is 22.1, with a relative humidity, environmental humidity of 47%. Okay, all right, so. Now, if we want to go, so we go back to current status, just to so you know what's happening there. If you want to go and configure the UPS, let's go and look at configuration down in this menu. All right, starting from the top, uh, UPS configuration. Okay, 
Uh, essentially, these are just default settings that you really don't need to do too much on here unless you just want to list um, the last time of your last battery replacement. You can look at a test log. Okay, if you want, at the moment, this I'm not invoking an automatic test log, but you can do things here. For instance, you can run a weekly test, uh, weekly battery test, and you can set up which day of the week you want, what time it starts, what type of battery test, um, and what have you. So for the time being, I'll just go back to none and leave that. Warning thresholds you can set uh, for critical load, as I indicated in that system's homepage originally. Uh, what critical loads, 80% load, critical temperatures, and critical capacities on the battery to invoke um, event alarms. Okay, so this is all in the um, configuration page. Um, you can look at UPS on-off schedule. You, you can play with these schedules, um, what you want your UPS to do on a weekly schedule, a date schedule, and wake on LAN facilities. All right, your network settings. Okay, this is just basically my network settings. Um, uh, in this case, I'm using DHCP, but these are all the parameters um, that you can see. Uh, IPv6, Ethernet, uh, Dynamic DNS, and Triple PoE. Um, okay, so that's for network. All right, go back to him. Uh, SNMP, okay, um, basically just tells you what you need to know for your um, uh, SNMP ports. Um, and also some summary details which you can modify so you, you personalize the SNMP for the specific UPS that it's inserted in. Um, access control, you can limit um, who has access and what level of priority they have uh, with different levels of um, authentication, MD5 and privacy using DES. Uh, trap notifications, once again you can go and play with that. But I won't go into that in this, this particular video. It gets a little bit detailed. And what devices you've got connected to it. All right. So let's go down to emails. It's the next menu. Now, emails, this is very interesting. If you have an event which uh, occurs like loss of utility power and you want to be notified in an email, well, essentially, all you need to do is you go out on port 25 and you just set up um, the email server that you want to send the recipient um, uh, you want to send from. You, uh, your sender's email address, uh, whether or not you want authentication, your account name, password, um, and um, away you go. All right. Um, all right. Now, that's for setting uh, just the basic premise of your, your sending email details. But now, for the event log, for instance, if you want an email to occur to, to be sent, so you select this, and then you come across here. And then you can choose what event actually will trigger an email. So any one of these, because these are all ticked at the moment, will uh, essentially invoke the, an email to be sent to the recipient address you want it to go to. Okay. Um, same with Netfeeler 2. Uh, once again, um, depending upon what critical temperatures I've set, uh, any of these events will trigger an email. So that's just a quick summary, and we can go over that in another video in more detail. Okay, and then you've got SMS, okay, um, you've got web telnet, uh, system time, okay, you've got SSL information, radius server, all of this you can go through and look at in the um, user manual. Uh, system time, pretty self-explanatory. You can either use this default time server or you can set up uh, anything in this library or if you choose, you can go and edit and, and actually add your own specific time server if you wish to do that. Okay. Um, and so in this case, we're, um, I've set it for local Perth time, Western Australia, so it's GMT plus eight, and we don't have daylight saving at the moment. Um, and essentially, that's all you need to do there. Netfeeler 2 or Netfeeler. Okay. Again, it just tells you what you want set for your critical underruns and critical overruns, so you can set those parameters. Language, well, that's pretty self explanatory. So, in this case, it's English. Now, um, so I'll just go back to this guy here, this window. Now, if you want to go and look at log information, because I've been using this, this SNMP card in a UPS for a while now, 
you can go look at event and data logs. So you can look at events. Okay, these are events that have happened um, today and in the past a uh, couple of past week or so, um, and that will keep a log. Okay, of all events, um, and you can see it scrolling down there. Right. Now you can export event logs as CSV files, and the same with data logs. All right. So, for instance, here data log. Okay, same again here. All right. You've got basically input voltage, output voltage, frequency, the load, capacity of batteries, and the internal temperature of the UPS. All right. And it just it'll just keep um, adding to the data log. So if you have an issue that you're trying to track down for problem solving, uh, these data logs and event logs are uh, invaluable to solving those sort of issues. And once again, you can export the the data log and the event log as CSV files, and it's very important to do that um, if you need assistance from PowerShell. Great to have those handy. Okay, battery test log. Um, you can look at um, that as a um, just a basic curve, uh, but we'll go into that later. This help menu. You can search net. It just helps you search net agent itself. See report debug. Okay, this is really used by factory more than anything else to understand um, uh, what the SNMP card is doing. But I won't go into that for the time being. All right. So. Um, well, actually, I'll let it load. Yep, I can do run. Okay, this is just a serial port debug to let us know what's happening if you suspect there's an issue either with the um, SMP card or your comms interface. Okay, but you don't need to go too much into that. So let's go back to there. That's a help menu you can go through. So, all right, so just going back to the very beginning, that's pretty well all you need to know about um, how to browse the SNMP card. Um, and in another video, I'll show you the sister software to this, which is ClientMate, to be installed on Windows to work with your SNMP card. Thank you very much for watching this video.